Hallelujah. Be blessed without limits, Your Excellency. This morning, I am leading my spirit to talk to us on the importance of focus this year. You know, during the time of Jesus here on earth, one of the things that He taught His disciples is this same topic I am going to actually speak to us about today. Jesus was speaking to His disciples um, according to the record in Matthew chapter 6 from verses 22 he said to them the lamp of the body is the eye if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of light but if your eyes is bad your whole body will be full of darkness he went further to tell them say if therefore the light that is in you is darkness how great is that darkness how can a child of god have the light of god which is god in him and jesus is saying here that if the light that is in that person is now darkness how can jesus be saying that that same light in that person can be can be turned into darkness what actually is jesus trying to say here jesus is trying to tell his disciples that it is possible for you to be a carrier of God and your life will be full of darkness. Why? Because you lack focus. Because you lack focus. He told them, I repeat, I want to repeat that scripture for you because you need to understand this. He said in verses 22 of that Matthew chapter 6, the lamp of the body is the eyes. If therefore your eyes is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes is bad, your eyes is talking about your focus. If your focus is bad, if your attention is distracted, if you have so many things that is distorting your attention, he said, if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If your focus is bad, if you lose focus in life, if you lose focus of the purpose of which God has sent you to the earth, if you lose focus because of the distractions you are seeing around you here on earth, or because of so many satanic signposts around you, then the devil might come with distractions in your health. He might come with distractions in your emotions. He might come with distractions in your career. He might come with financial distractions. Jesus is saying that if your eyes becomes bad, your life will be full of darkness. You will, you will see that you, because you lose focus, Satan will enter. You are broken an edge that will bring the devil in. So this year, child of God, what the Jesus is trying to let us know, he's trying to make every one of us understand the importance of focus in life. This is that year you must not give room to the devil. You must be focused. And when I was speaking to God this morning, on what are the possible things, we should, what are the possible steps we can take for us to be focused this year? He gave me just three major steps that we need to follow. Three major simple things that we can do for us not to lose focus this year. The number one thing he told me is that this is that year that we must forget the things of the past. You know, Paul the Apostle, when he was speaking in Philippians chapter 3 from verses 13, from verses 12 for reference purposes, he said that it's not that he has already attained or that he is already perfected, but he press on that he may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of him. Paul the apostle, when Jesus arrested him on his way to Damascus, there is an assignment that Jesus gave to him. And Paul, when he was talking to, 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 to the people of Philippines, he was trying to tell them that he himself, he has not actually attained, he has not actually gotten to the, to the end of his assignment on earth. So one thing he do is this. He said to them in verse 10, say, brethren, one thing I do is to count, is, 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 is to forget those things which are behind. 
you know paul the apostle has so many things that is going that is supposed to weigh him down emotionally not to carry on the assignment of god number one he was a murderer he was a murderer he has so many sins that he has committed that would have made him say oh i am unworthy to appear before god maybe you're under the sound of my voice god has been calling you to carry out a particular assignment but when you look at your past when you look at your lifestyle when you look at the sum of the things you have done in the past you think you are not worthy paul the apostle found himself in that same situation but Paul said that one thing he does is forgetting those things of the past because he knows that one of the things that can actually stop him from being focused in life is things from his past, issues from the past, emotional traumas from the past, molestations from the past. I don't know what is speaking from your past, child of God. I don't know what is speaking from your past that is stopping your present assignment on earth, that is stopping your future, that wants to stop you from being focused this year. The Lord is telling us, child of God this year, is that year you must forget the things of the past. Do away with the past. Stop crying over spilled milk. He left you, and so what? Are you not the one that gave him your heart in the first time? He broke the heart. He never valued it. Please package back your heart. Fix it back to where it belongs to. Till the person that will value it show up. This is not that year you, you cry over spilled milk. Oh, I am a divorcee. How can I speak about married people? How can I speak to those that are married? How can I speak to those that are single? Will they not look at my past? No, God doesn't care. Paul the apostle had a very bad past, but God used him greatly to bring about the gospel you and I are reading today. If I Paul the apostle, that man that had a very bad past was the one that God greatly used in our New Testament. He wrote majority of the New Testament information that me and you are reading today, and we are feeling the presence of God from it. If Paul was not converted by God, who knows what would have been about the gospel of Jesus. Because he was not with Jesus as one of his disciples. But because of that singular encounter he had with Christ, that singular encounter he had with God, he spread the gospel wide and far, far far beyond the level that even the disciples of Jesus were able to go to. Child of God, stop crying. Stop shedding tears over the past. Stop dwelling in the past. If you keep on dwelling in the past, you will never march forward in life. You will always have distorted vision. You will always have distorted focus in life. So if you must actually move forward, you must start, you have to deal with the past. You have to forget the things of the past. Paul said that he, has, he didn't count himself to have apprehended. But one thing he do is this. One thing he do, he didn't say two things, he didn't say three things. He said, one thing I do is this, forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. There is a greater future for you. If you read further, in verses 14 of the Philippians chapter 3, he said, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, uh, let, let us, as many as are matured, have this mind. And if anything, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. I am interested in the verses uh, 16 of that. He said, nevertheless, to the degree that, uh, to the degree to the degree that we have already attained, to the level wherein you are right now, you don't need to lose focus. He said, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk by the same rule. You might be saying, Mama, I have been a person that is focused in life. I don't think this message is for me. Listen, you can actually, you can derail. An emotional something can hit you now, you will just lose focus. But Paul is saying, at the degree at which you have attained in that your vision, in that your emotional strength, in that your prayer altar, continue in it. Let this guide you. Be focused. Let your eyes be single. Let your eyes be single. That is what God is saying to us this morning. Never lose focus. 
Never lose focus. And one other thing that God told me that we need to do for us not to lose focus is that we must learn how to think the right things. You know, the simple one he was speaking to the Philippians in that same uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 8. He said, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue in it, if there is anything praiseworthy in it, he said, Meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. Think on these things. If you think on the wrong things, child of God, you will always end up at you will end, you, you will definitely lose focus. Your thinking works with your, your, your focusing, like it works with your mindset, it works with your attention. Anytime your, your thinking shifts a bit, your sight will definitely shift. So this year, if you must actually enjoy uh, 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 blessings unlimitedly, unendingly, as God has promised us in this year, you must actually be focused. You have to be focused. No matter the emotional distractions. Let me tell you this year, you will see a lot of things that might want to distract you emotionally, that might want to distract you in business. Be love. The Lord is saying, be focused. Let your eyes be single. Let your eyes be single in that business. Be single-minded. One other thing that God told me that, that is going to help us this year to be focused is he said, I said, he said, direct your attention on one project part time. Direct your attention on one project part time. Don't be a master of all things. And at the end of the day, you will not be able to achieve everything. Most of you have written down your New Year resolution. If you are not focused this year and you don't focus your attention on one project part time, no matter how the other project is calling you to start it, beloved, you might end up this year not achieving anything. But I pray that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. The word of God this morning to us is this. We must be focused. Be focused this year, beloved. Be focused this year, beloved. Don't allow anything to distort your focus. No matter where the devil is manufacturing the distraction from, he might even manufacture it from your health. He might manufacture it from the life of your children. He might manufacture it from the life of your husband. He might manufacture it from the environment, from your community, from the country where you are living, from the global community. Beloved, this year, never allow anything to distort your focus. Never allow anything to distort your focus. And as you do this, beloved, the Lord is going to help you this year to attain this unending, limitless blessing. He has, he has promised every one of us for this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, before I go off your way, I want you to open your mouth and say, Oh Lord, my Father, anything at all that is going to obstruct my focus this year, my Father, my Maker, anything the enemy has actually planted into my future, into any day of this year, into any hour of this year, into any seconds of this year, to distract me to bring about a distortion in my focus. My father, my maker, I ask that you, God, will oppress them all. Even when they come, Lord, give me strength on my inner man, never to be moved, never to be shaken. Open your mouth, child of God, right now, and begin to fire prayers.